Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you to each and every one of you for being here with us today. We are pleased to welcome you to join the Architects Product Talk with the topic of Design of Building Facade, the Trend, the Aesthetic, and the Performance, brought to you by NS Blue Scope Lysa. Should you have any queries, do visit our online exhibition stand by clicking at the button below. So at first, uh, let me introduce our guest speaker today, Ms. Wang Sokling. Sokling is the Technical Marketing Engineer of NS Blue Scope Malaysia. She is managing product innovation, technical consultation, and training in Kuta Steel Technology for ASEAN and also the South Africa region. Hi, Sokling. How are you? I feel glad to have you today. Yeah. Hi, Jiao. I'm good. Thanks for inviting me to be a guest speaker uh, today. It is my pleasure to be here to share some information via the new norm platform, the webinar, after we have gone through the COVID-19 pandemic for the past one year. Yeah, I think this is a new norm for all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so regarding our topic today, the facade. So uh, what's your thought and what is your in your mind about uh, how the material can affect the design of the overall building outlook? Mm, I would say facade would be the pioneer of the building design because facade will be the important aspect where it will bring out the tone for the rest of the building. The type of the profile selection will be crucial to bring out the uniqueness of the facade design, whether it's a curvature or the straight line uh, design. And the tone of the building is highly depending on the selection of colors, the type of the finishes of the materials in order to bring out the vibrance and fascinate the outlook. So I will be sharing the type of the finishes this is available in the Kotak steel uh, materials, which is suitable for faster application in that section. Yep, this is a very good information. Huh? So I hope audience can know more about it in the later session when you're going to share with us. So thank you, Sokling. I will bring you back to the screen uh, when come to your mm -hmm. sharing session. Yep, sure. Okay, so uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm the host uh, and the speaker of today. My name is Ang Chia Hao. Currently, I'm the Technical Solution Manager of NS Plus Group Malaysia. My school will include technical services, product development, and digitalization in business support. Today, I will be sharing with you in three topics, which are the trend and insights of facade design, choices of LISA profiles, and challenges and consideration when you use steel facade. After that, Sokling will share her knowledge in choices of material and coating technology. Okay, let's start with the first topic of today, trend and insights of facade design. Generally, there are many types of facade is used in the industry. The facade that I list in this slide are the most common used in the industry today, which are the steel facade, curtain wall facade, aluminum composite panel, glass facade, and precast concrete facade. I will go through one by one later on. Let's start with the first type of facade, steel facade. <coughs> There are two kinds of steel facade is used in the industry today, which is the uh, wall cladding and also the infill walls. Wall cladding is used when uh, there are existing brick wall or concrete wall that is already built onto the building. The wall cladding is installed on top of the existing wall purely for aesthetic purpose. It does not consider as functional wall because the existing wall already take the role in insulation, but not the wall cladding. The installation method is very, very straightforward. It is just purely fixing the cladding onto the support that is already prefixed onto the existing wall, which is as shown in the uh, bottom of this slide. Okay, let's talk about the infill wall. Infill wall is the, we also can define it as a functional wall because it's, uh, it's not only play the part insulation, but also provide the aesthetic purpose. The panel is infilled with the core material it can be PIR, PU, or mineral wool. It plays a role in the insulation and also the fire resistance. Normally, it is manufactured in the thickness range from 25 mm to 200 mm, and it is fabricate, fabricated in the standard line. Infill wall is installed in a similar way as wall cladding, uh, which is uh, fixing on the panel onto the prefix support. The only difference is uh, the infill wall may be slightly a bit heavier because there's a core material and double skin between back and, uh, uh, and the surface. Okay, let's talk about the second type of the facade, which is the curtain wall facade. <clears throat> it is kind of the light metallic and glazed cladding. 
It can be attached with the stone and towel also. And then we need to assemble, we need a so-called special assemble method to install the cladding, that's the, to install the facade. And also we need special components to install it. And the good thing, the benefit of using a uh, curtain wall facade is it provides excellent performance in water tightness and insulation. And regarding aluminum composite panel, or we call it as ACP, there are two kinds of it uh, that's normally used in the industry, which is composite panel and also honeycomb panel. Let's start with the composite panel. Composite panel is formed by the infilled calcium silicate or polymer. The material is uh, infilled into the space in between two pieces of aluminum sheet. The overall thickness is very, very thin. It's talking about 3 mm to 6 mm. Some composite panel is fire rated, but some is not, especially those infilled with polymer. It is very flexible and it is, uh, so this is normally used for the so-called the complex shape of facade. It can curve, it can turn, it can shape it into very uh, different shape compared to other facade, which is shown in this slide. However, another type of the SCP is called a uh, honeycomb panel. It's formed by lamination, lamination of two aluminum sheets onto the front and back of the aluminum honeycomb. Let me point that out, which is the honeycomb. The middle one, this is the honeycomb panel. Front and back is the aluminum sheet. So the overall thickness is talking about from 10 mm to 25 mm. Honeycomb panel is non-combustible, it is very rigid. So it is not able to form complex shape of facade as what composite panel uh, can do. The fourth type of facade that we're going to discuss today is a uh, glass facade. Generally, other than the vertical steel structure support, the entire facade is uh, made by glass. And then the support normally is made by stainless steel in hollow section. Steel com uh, and then a special component also is needed for the installation. It is not a straightforward way to install the glass facade. And the last facade that I'm going to share today is uh, the precast concrete. There are two kinds of precast concrete facades that are commonly used in the market. First type is used as a pure cladding for the building. It's similarly to the wall cladding, the steel wall cladding that I showed you just now. It is normally attached to the existing wall. This type of facade is normally used uh, when the shape is not able to be formed by any material. As you can see in this slide, uh, this complex shape of the facade, it can't be formed in any kind of material uh, like glass or even like aluminum or steel. So only the concrete can be used to form this kind of shape. Because when you form this kind of shape and you want to lift it up for the installation, you can't really use the normal concrete. You have to use a lightweight concrete so that can easily to be lifted up for installation. The second type of the uh, precast concrete facade is a precast functional wall. Normally, this is formed with a concrete grade same as the structure because it's part of the structure component, which means that uh, the concrete wall is not only to support the load, but also play the part of the artistic aesthetic purpose. And uh, this kind of the precast wall is very heavy compared to the precast concrete facade because uh, this using the structural concrete grid, but the rigidity is much better. All right, so uh, I share with you with five types of the facade you commonly use in the industry. So, uh, which means other than that, actually there's are many more of the facade is uh, offered in the market also. Since there are many kinds and many types of facade offered in the market, as such, you may be raised up a question is, uh, how are you going to choose the suitable type of facade for your project and ensure it can make the maximum productivity with the lowest budget? So here we have uh, summarized six main factors. You maybe can take it for your consideration when you want to short this facade that you want to use for your project. And this one, we are make a reference to the, uh, the facade access design guide, the BCA 2017. The sixth of the factor is the first is safety and regulatory requirements. Second is the building heights and geometry. It's a facade complexity. Fourth is a maintenance needs. Fifth is a productivity. And the last, number six, is a maintenance cost. So I will go through it one by one. Number one, about the safety and regulatory requirements, which means that uh, 
when you choose for the facade, the facade must be compliance, comply to the Occupational Safety and Healthy Act, or we call it OSHA. And also we have to comply to the fire regulation requirement or bomba regulation, as well as other applicable building codes or standard. Other than that, uh, the loading condition or the need of the additional strengthening of the structure to the support, uh, because each facade has a special uh, support system. So whether or not you need to have additional support or to strengthen, to strengthen existing structure to support the facade, this is very crucial. So the structural design should be reviewed by the professional engineer or the competent person. And the design of the access system for maintenance or cleaning must comply to the rules also. And also when you consider for the rescue or the emergency circumstance access, you must according to the bomba requirement also. Number two is uh, regarding this uh, building hacks and geometry. What is this all about? Which means when you choose for the uh, type of facade, you need to consider the height and geometry of the building. For example, uh, the width of the facade should be the main consideration, especially for the tall building, because the taller the building is, the more expensive and heavy uh, facade is used. And also the height and geometry of building will determine whether long length facade or small modular facade should be used. For example, is if, you, if you have a very tall building, you can't really make use of the long length facade for installation because the wind blowing and the heavier of the facade, it make the installation very slow. Then maybe you have to consider to use a small modular facade for installation. The third point is uh, irregular building shape. We also usually need customized or multiple access solu uh, solution. So as such, the cost will be increased. What does it mean? Which means that if you have a regular building, so you can't really make use of the standard access system. You must customize it. So in other words, you have to increase the project cost. The designer uh, consider to use complex facade for building design. Uh, Actually, designers should quite understand that there's an inherent constraint or the restriction imposed by the building envelope. Um, let's pick it in an uh, uh, example. For example, that uh, if, if the curve for the building envelope is too small, there are no product in the market is able to form it. The designer may be facing the problem in changing the design during construction stage when contractor is not able to do it. So can you imagine that there will be a big problem on that? You will delay the whole project. So therefore, the complex uh, uh, facade when used for irregular building envelope, designer must consider what type of facade can be used to form the, form the shape. And the construction period must be part of the consideration too. If, if you do not have luxury construction time to use complex shape facade, designer should consider either abandon the irregular building shape design, or you still can keep it, but you must involve the, involve the facade specialist in the very early stage. Okay, number four, maintenance needs. So I think everybody should know that uh, maintenance will be the big headache for the facilities manager if it is not considered during the design stage. So during the design stage, we should always consider factors such as the frequency for cleaning and extent of maintenance work is required. And also how many and where the access system should be designed. Other than unscheduled tasks such as repair and replacement of glazing, cladding, sunshade, etc., all this should be considered too. Therefore, involve the access system specialist in the design stage, especially for the irregular building shape, is very crucial. For example, all this picture as shown in this slide, the building is very in the irregular shape and the system, uh, the access system has to be designed uh, by customization. So you should involve the uh, access system designer if you have a irregular building shape. Five, talking about productivity. Productivity is about that uh, the choice of the facade you use in the project, whether it can increase or maybe reduce your productivity. For example, like the, the categorize of the different shape of the facade in the building can help to increase the productivity in the production and also for the installation. For example, if complex shape facade is used, try to use repeat shape in a certain interval for your design. Then it can reduce the category of different shape of the facade. Let me show you the example. In these two pictures, from far you can see that 
uh, you will have an impression that the fascia is very, very complicated and complex, and each piece is a different shape. But actually, the designer will wisely to use the same shape of the fascia, but just use it in a certain interval distance, so that you have an impression that this is very complicated. But actually, this is a so-called repeated use of the same shape, but it means a certain interval distance. By doing that, it will increase the productivity because actually you can categorize the shape of the facade. So minimize the different shape of the facade in a single project will be the at the point in the productivity. And then the second, uh, the third point is uh, maximize the facade coverage per man hour will be more productive such as the long length facade is used. Let me put it in sample is uh, if you use facade A, you maybe need eight man hour to cover 10 meters square of area. But if you choose the facade B, you may be able to cover 10 meters square of area with six man hours only. So this is depends the choice of the facade you use. And of course, if the facade can be installed with a simple method, it can increase the efficiency too. And last factor is about the maintenance cost. I mentioned about maintenance had to be considered in your design in very beginning stage. Otherwise, you will bring, you will bring the trouble when the building in operation. Actually, other than the maintenance work that you need to consider, you have to consider the maintenance cost also because uh, it might be affect the, the overall building operation cost. So let me sh uh, share with you with some of the uh, factors that maybe affect the maintenance cost. First is about the cost of the regular servicing and maintenance of the access system and equipment that is installed. So when you liaise with the uh, access system specialist, you need to consider that whether this system have to be uh, serviced regularly and whether uh, how long the maintenance period will be. And second is the availability of the skilled worker to operate and inspect the special access system or equipment. As I mentioned earlier, and when you have an irregular building envelope, you maybe need to customize the uh, access system or the equipment. But this has come to the point is, uh, if you had the special uh, uh, access system or the customized access system, whether or not you are able to hire the skilled worker locally or you that can able to operate and also inspect the system. Otherwise, then you may be every time you need to uh, spend money to invite the skilled worker from overseas, then the cost will be very high. Then number three is a part of that is easy to change and commonly available in the market. So if you can find this kind of the uh, uh, facade system, this should be a priority choice. And also the facade that is easy to clean or less cleaning is needed, that's a better choice also. And uh, the last factor is about the sustainability of the company who supply the customized facade is very crucial. Because if you use the complex facade, but the company no longer exists, so can you imagine that how you're going to find the replacement of the facade sheet or the spare part? So the sustainability of the company is very important. So come to here, I hope uh, this section can bring the idea you, uh, to you about uh, type of the facade and how to choose the suitable facade. So I will go into more detail. Uh, I introduce a light up profile to you, which is a steel facade. So maybe this will be consideration for you if you intend to use steel facade in your design. So NS Blue Scope Lights Up products uh, have been used as a steel facade in many different types of buildings, such as industrial, commercial, building utilities, institution, and residential. Wide range of product profile made by durable in-house material with the extensive color selection give the designer a broad selection of the steel wall uh, cladding design. Profile that commonly use uh, as a wall cladding design, as shown in this slide, is uh, there's four types of them, which is the x Lysa Lysa 360 SIM, Lysa HR 29 Optima, and Lysa Multi-Click Optima. I will show you some project photo later on to show you how good of this profile used in the project. This is the IKEA that uh, in Cheras, Penang, and Terbrow different location, but the wall uh, is uh, designed and also installed with the same profile and colors because we want to, you have to match with the IKEA corporate colors. In this project, uh, HR29 Optima and Multi 
click optimize is used. And this is a Hub Singh Business Park at Shah Alam. It's an outstanding Lysa expert with the good matching colors. It's used as wall cladding. And this is a Langawi Underwater World. Uh, we use a 360 seam, single as a wall cladding. Uh, as you can see in the photo here, although the bare single is used in the building design, but it gives a remarkable modern outlook to the building. And this is a broad dual central at the Darling Jaya, another good example to help customer to match the corporate colors. HR29 Optima is used as facade. And this is a wonderful building design. This is a Toro Park apartment at Kuching. Like some 360 seam is used to form the marvelous uh, wall cladding to the building. All right, so other than the common profile that were introduced, here is uh, other potential profile. They are very suitable to be used at wall cladding, which are the Lysa Spender or Lysa Spender Optima, Lysa Trim Deck or Lysa Trim Deck Optima, and Lysa Custom Op. Maybe some of the audience maybe have a feeling that how come I introduce this kind of corrugated profile to you? Uh, corrugated profile commonly will give the impression of non-modern outlook and normally used for the industry building. However, it can be used for as a wall cladding for commercial, residential, institution or public utilities if the profile is used in a creative way. So a uh, corrugated product can bring the building alive if the designer use it creatively, for example, we orientate it, we mix it with different colors or design it with multiple layers. In, in the subsequent slide, I will show you some of the good example how to use this product in a creative way. Right, this is the MPHHQ at Alice Spring, Australia. Architect used the Lysa custom op as a wall cladding. As you can see, the angular wing-like structures brought out the futuristic effect and they orientate the custom op with a certain angle to bring out the layering effect. And of course, that if you're using the right colors combination, it's able to bring out the modernized view of the building too, even though Spandex is used in this project. This is the Lucas Community Club in Austria. This is another good example to use a different colors to present the modern outlook of the building by using corrugated profile. This is a SPC and Mona warehouse in Austria and custom of its use. Okay, this is uh, the rebuild of the caring community that was damaged by bushfire in a few years back. As you can see that it, it, it was completed with a stunning 40 meter snake made by the Lysa custom of cladding. Uh, let me point it out. This is the 40 meter snake made by custom of. This project is called Forest Age Recreation Camp in Austria. And uh, corrugated profiles that were used in the private house uh, and it will not give any industrial feel to you if you choose the right color and the right orientation. Here is some of the good examples to present you that the great building outlook can be present out uh, even though you use the, the corrugated profile. And these few projects in Australia, they're using the custom op to form the wall cladding. Of course, other than exterior, Lysa product is also suitable for interior design. Uh, just to introduce to you that uh, this is one of the example, the office renovation in Sydney, Austria. Uh, the client that used uh, our corrugated profile is called Mini Op as a partition wall cladding. Back to our country here. This is the Sarawak Oil Palm Factory. Architects selected the unique color to bring the whole building design quite outstanding. Uh, Trinidad Optima is used in this project. It's another good example by using the Spandex Optima, which is industrial outlook profile, but create modernized uh, building uh, feel to the this uh, spot complex at Johor. So uh, maybe I just point out because this, this photo is show the roof more than the wall. So this wall, this wall cladding, all is made by Spandex Optima. And of course, that uh, if you use a uh, good color matching, 
this is the what you can see that uh, the designer use a span that to create a modern outlook for an old building by smart use of the mix and match of the color palettes to the facade. So this is the paper factory in Singapore. Okay, let's get into the third topic of today, which is the challenges and consideration. The challenges and consideration I'm going to share uh, 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 today is about the steel facade or our product as used as steel facade. So uh, just to bring out that uh, any products will be having good and bad. So we wouldn't hide any bad about by using our product as a steel facade, but based on some consideration, actually it's not that bad, but just to share with you, in certain circumstances, there maybe has some little challenge of using NS Blue Scope Light Side as a steel facade. For example, in terms of the robustness, uh, steel is not equally as strong as curtain wall with stone or precast concrete facade. Compared to this facade, steel is more easily to be damaged. However, steel is not the weakest material among all kinds of facade. Steel is still considered a strong material. As such, we raise steel facade as compatible among the facade available in the market. Then regarding the lightness, aluminium is lighter and more flexible compared to steel. So it is suitable to be used for high-rise building and complex shape facade. However, steel, steel is not the heaviest material among all kinds of facade system. If compared to other like curtain wall and precast, it's still lighter than that. So it's still compatible. And steel is rigid compared to aluminium facade and the precast concrete facade because steel is not easily to form the shape according to any kind of the building envelope. But compared to the other rigid facades such as curtain wall or glass, steel is not the most rigid material. As such, we define steel facade is uh, compatible in terms of diversity and adaptability. So the features behind challenges is the advantages. So we did some comparison of the NS Blue Scope Lysa steel facade to another products. First, let's talk, let's talk about robustness. Compared to aluminium and glass, steel is uh, rating as good because it is stronger. So uh, steel facades should be considered if uh, there's a risk of damaging facade from the surrounding environment. For example, if there are the heavy duty vehicle travel around or there's a high possibility from surrounding, for example, there will be a, a lot of tree branches that may be uh, blow through the facade, then steel facade should be the first consideration. Regarding lightness, steel is rated excellent compared to curtain wall uh, concrete facade and uh, glass facade because it's lighter. So the installation speed shall be faster if uh, facade steel is used. Since uh, steel is coming with a long length and thicker cover wave, so it is quite outstanding in increasing the productivity by reduce the installation time. And compared to the glass facade and curtain wall, steel facade coming with a wide range of the profile and colors, so it is excellent in the diversity. And regarding number five, the simplicity, uh, steel facade is, uh, in terms of the installation, uh, can make it is uh, more outstanding compared to other facade because this is just need to be engaged to the support by screw or clip onto the uh, particular prefix support onto the building. And I think point is this, we do not need any special components for the installation. So it become an add-on value in terms of the increasing the productivity too. Then compared to the glass facade and curtain wall facade, steel facade can be easily adapted to the designer's design requirement because it can be oriented in any direction. And it can be arranged in different colors also to form a different tone. So we read it as good. And the last advantage of using steel facade is uh, the coverage of the wall per transportation is greater than other facade because steel facade can be stacked in bundle. Uh, maybe put it in layman or the simple way to, to elaborate it is, uh, let's say for example, there's one truck, it may be to deliver 100 meter square of steel facade. But if let's say if you use aluminum facade, the, in one full truck of the goods, there may be only uh, cover less than 100 meter square. So it depends on the transportation of the, of the goods also. So therefore cannot deny that uh, the maximized coverage of the steel facade onto cladding area uh, still is outstanding compared to other facade. 
So come to here, there are challenges, advantages of using uh, steel facade by compared to other different facade. So in what circumstances that the designer should consider to use steel facade? So uh, we prepare some of the guidelines or checklists in the subsequent slide. You maybe take it for your consideration. Yes, here, this is a technical consideration or checklist to assist designer to consider light up product as facade in the project. So number one is uh, if the building geometry or the shape do not have any complex twist or multiple 3D curve. It is just the ordinary building design such as the building as shown in this slide. Lysa product is able to serve for the purpose. Okay. Number two, uh, building to be designed in modern outlook, but you need to be uh, cost efficient and also you have a time constraint. Then Lysa product is able to, to serve for the purpose because Lysa product is able to bring out the trendy design by orientate the profile in different angle or orientate in different layer. In addition, you can mix with different colors to create the contrary effect also. Some of the good examples as shown in this slide, those are the industrial look products such as spandex, custom mop are used in the projects. However, when designer create the uh, facade by orientate the profile in non-ordinary angle and also put it in layering, create color tones, it brought out the building in very modern outlook. And also when your client is demand for the facade that is non-brittle, strong, but in lightweight, in this case, steel facade is the best choice. As shown in the photos here, uh, normally factory owner or the homeowner are the particularly prefer strong and lightweight material to be used as facade. Finally, if your client prefer to use a cost efficient solution and shortest construction time for the project, and get the demand for the modern outlook, then Lysa product is able to fit for the purpose. It's because uh, steel facade is roll form in a long line, so the coverage per piece is bigger. In addition, it is stacked with the multiple pieces in bundle, so it brings the advantage in the bigger coverage per transportation. And it is the type of facade that is easiest to be installed compared to other facade, so it can shorten the construction time also. So I hope all this uh, will be your checklist or the guideline for you if you would like to consider uh, Lysa for your uh, FASA system. All right, that's all for my presentation today. Let's have our guest speaker today to share her knowledge about choices of material and coating technology. So Ling, over to you. Yep. Uh, thanks, Jiahao. So good evening, everyone. My name is Soling. I'm a technical uh, marketing engineer from MS Busco Malaysia. So today, I'll be sharing about the choice of materials that is suitable for your facade design. So I will be sharing the different type of the finishes that is available in the coated steel materials. So like I started with the solid finish. So what is solid finish means? Normally we address something that is rigid as solid. So when it comes to the colors, it means that it reach in uh, certain colors and it is plain and unbattened. This is what we call solid finish color. Like the color chart that you are able to see over the screen over here is are the, some of the example of the solid finish color. And how does this solid finish color able to bring up your building design to be more outstanding? Let me show you uh, one uh, example over here. This is one of the project uh, reference. This building is uh, Zapadan Odin Nagara in Trenganu. The concept of the building design is actually they want to transform those uh, traditional residential building, especially in the village, towards more modernized kind of the building design. And they have selected the solid finish color, which is the olden red color for these uh, buildings. So the mixing of using the solid finish color, it enables to preserve the heritage white. So the selection of colors is very crucial to on your building design to make your buildings to be more uh, vibrant or vaccinated. Another building here is actually, uh, this is the, the operation center for the police force. So they have selected the solid color, which is the dark gray color, which able to bring up the building to be more sturdy and firm, like how the police should be have 
for this uh, operation center for police force. This is located in Brunei. When it comes to the slightly complex uh, of the building design, for example, like the, the dome shapes, the mixing of green solid colors towards the building design were also able to bring out the, uh, the outstanding impressions. The selection of green color, because in Muslim context, green is actually the symbolic of life and nature. And we talk about the uh, painted products. I think one of the aspects that we will be looking look at would be the color performance, because we are unsure whether how good the color performance is by looking at the fresh produce or color paints, for example. All this uh, color performance, it requires to undergo a series of testing, the exposure test, in order to check the color performance. We can't really uh, comment whether uh, the, the fresh produce channel will be able to last long, unless the suppliers able to showcase the, uh, the proven track records and try to always uh, ask the suppliers to show uh, those exposure uh, track record rather than uh, accelerated testing. Because accelerated testing, even though you are able to get the result in the short, shorter period of time, but I would say all this uh, accelerated uh, testing result, it only uh, can contribute to the indicative result. It does not really representing the uh, actual environment. So uh, from the image over here is basically uh, one of the exposure tests. So even though it requires a longer uh, exposure time in order to obtain the result, but this one is really uh, representing the actual performance under the actual barrel. Next, uh, I will be uh, sharing about the, another type of the finishes, which is the metallic finish. So for the metallic finish uh, paint, the pigment itself consists of the metallic pigment. And generally, this metallic pigment is known as a mica pigments. So uh, with the presence of uh, this mica pigments, it tends to reflect the light to the various uh, uh, directions. And hence, we will be having the geometric uh, metamerism uh, very easily. So what does this geometric metamerism mean? Let me give you one example. So the disc over here and also the rectangular panel at the back actually is the same metallic colors. If you are putting in the same directions, it will give you the identical uh, color shape. However, if I rotate slightly, rotate it to 45 uh, degree of rotation and also 180 degree of rotations, it seems like the shape of the disc is slightly different compared to the rectangular uh, panels over there. What if I rotate uh, 90 degree? The color shape of the disc itself, it seems like two different uh, color shape comparing to the uh, rectangular uh, color panel over there. But in fact, it is the same metallic uh, finish color. This is what we call geometric metamerism. At different uh, directions, different angles, you tend to see different type of the shading. And this image is actually to simulate. If you install the panel uh, vertically or horizontally, it tends to give you a different kind of the shading. And this is one of the building whereby they are using the metallic finish color as their wall cladding. And this photo is actually taken during the daytime at the, high, uh, at the top view. And for the wall uh, panel itself, it's basically featuring the light gray uh, color shade. However, if you take in the another photos during the evening time, whereby the light source is highly depending on the straight line, and you are taking the photos from the ground level. And for the wall panel itself, it is featuring darker gray color compared to the photo taken during the daytime. This is the specialty on metallic finish colors. So if you are using the metallic finish color, it tends to bring out the more glamorous outlook of your building. By looking at a different angle, it tends to give you different type of the shading. And do you know that this building is actually a residential building? I would say the building design for this uh, residential building is uh, 
slightly differ compared to the conventional or traditional kind of the residential building, whereby the wall is actually cladded with the cotton steel materials and the choice of the finishes is actually metallic finish colors. With the uh, additional, uh, the brightness of the wall, uh, what the wall cladding itself, I do believe that this residential building could be one of the iconic residential building in Sarawak in the future. This is Tura Park in Kuching, Sarawak. And I would like to uh, take the opportunity to share some of my, um, from my study towards the usage of metallic uh, finished uh, product under the corrosive uh, environments. So from my study, it's actually found out this metallic finish is actually not recommended to use a, under any corrosive environments because it is quite sensitive towards the corrosive sentences. So whenever there's an open area, for example, like the cut edges over here, then you tend to see the plant blistering is actually happen from the opening area towards the inner layer. So uh, metallic finish, even though it's, it's, uh, uh, it can create a resonant outlook, but please do not uh, use it under the corrosive environment. The third type of the finishes is actually the matte finish. And why we want to introduce uh, the matte finish, our main intention is we want to minimize the glare issue. Imagine if you are driving a car, pass by the building, and the, the glareiness of the building itself is actually will uh, create, I would say, an uh, uncomfortable kind of the eyesight. Imagine if you are facing towards this building, and you are having a very high specular reflectance for the buildings towards your eyes, it will impose the risk, the safety risk to you uh, as well, because you can't even really open your eyes while driving the car. So that's the reason why we, we intend to, in, uh, to develop the MAC finishes to minimize the glare issue. And how do we know whether uh, the finishes is a MAC finish or having the uh, uh, high uh, glare kind of the finishes, it actually can be quantifiable by the gloss unit. So if you perform the gloss meter readings, if you're in the reading is actually is a high uh, gloss unit, it means that uh, you're having the, the glary kind of the issue on the surface itself. And if the gloss unit is actually very low, it also means that this finishes is more towards the MAC finishes. And specular reflectance, um, it means that um, the incident ray and also the reflectant ray is actually reflected at the same angle. Like uh, you are reflecting the light using your mirror. That normally you will be getting the specular reflection. And the diffuse reflections is actually we want to uh, reflect the incident ray to the virus angle of directions. And hence, you will be getting the lower gloss unit which is more towards the MAC finishes. And this is the overview. If you are having the surface with a high uh, glossiness, like LT, then you tend to see a lot of uh, the, uh, the specular uh, reflectance from the surface itself. When you control the gloss unit uh, down to 10 unit, then you could see the, uh, the trending would be become a less uh, specular reflectance. It's more, it seems like the light is uh, have been reflected in more uh, diverse kind of the uh, angle. And for all the gloss, uh, for all the, the MAC finishes, the nominal gloss level is actually, we are controlling at seven uh, gloss unit. And please bear in mind that the difference on the gloss unit may affect the color intensity. And the image over here is actually, these two are the same color shade, but at a different uh, gloss unit. So at the lower gloss unit, it tends to give you a, a more a dull kind of the shading compared to the higher gloss unit. And this is one of our, our project reference, whereby the, all the wall cladding panels is actually using the MAC finishes. And when I look at this building, I have no worry towards the glare issue. And it also uh, brings up the sentiments of 
modern and more elegant kind of the building design by using the matte finish. And this is the another uh, shopping mall uh, buildings, which is located in uh, South Africa. It is also using the matte finishes for their uh, external cladding applications. And for these materials, they are looking for the higher coating class. As you can see, uh, this building is actually quite close to the cost line. And that's the reason why they need to look for the higher coating class, which is Carbon Ultra. So for Carbon Ultra series, basically it carries the, the higher coating class of AJAC 200 compared to, the norm, uh, compared to the rest of the Carbon series, which is only have an AJAC 150 coating class. So the type of environment will also decide on the type of the materials that you need to use. So remember for any um, corrosive environments, please look for the higher coating class like uh, Calabon Ultra series. Other than uh, looking at the type of the finishes, I would like to uh, share some of the technology which actually introduced in all the Calabon series. One of it is actually the high solar reflectant coating or in another is a solar reflectant uh, technologies uh, in general. And we use the thermotech terms to address this high solar reflectant or coating for carbon or product series. So uh, basically for this technology is we try to do the improvements on the coating itself, the paint coating itself, so that it won't be absorbing so much uh, the, the heat compared to the conventional type of the paint coating. But this one is quite subjective to the color range as um, most often those uh, light color shape like white, or the light beige, those color I would say is quite optimized in terms of solar reflectance because it already having the high solar reflectance value. However, for darker color shape like dark blue, dark gray or dark red, they have more uh, room for us to improve further because initially, the solar reflectant value for those dark color shades is quite low. So when we do the simulations, we are comparing the normal coating with the uh, high solar reflectant coating at the same color shape. And the result is actually uh, uh, tell us by in using the high solar reflectant uh, coatings, we tend to reduce the surface temperature from 66.6 degree to 57.1 degree C. This is one of the, uh, I would say, one of the technology have been introduced to all uh, coated steel materials. Another uh, technology uh, which are uh, also introduced in the color bonds would be the clean technology, or in another it is called self cleansing ability, so that uh, all the dirt particles, it won't be born or stick to the surface. It will just a temporary sitting on top of the, uh, of the panel surface and it requires the assistance of the rainwater to flush out all the dirt particles away. This is how it works. So over here, we are featuring uh, the exposure test again. The reason why we, want, we use the exposure test is because the result is more realistic, more representing the actual uh, exposure actual environment. So when we did the comparison with the right side, it actually come with the clean technology and then the left side is uh, without the clean technology. So after one year of exposure, you tend to see a lot of watermarks on the panel, which is without the surf cleansing ability. And then for the panel on the right, you do not see any sign of the, the pickup as well as watermark. And if your panels having uh, the clean technology, it will able to increase your cleanliness of your wall or facade. It is very important to always keep your wall and facade clean because it will be uh, representing the whole outlook of your building. And if you are able to maintain the cleanliness of your panels, you are also able to maintain the high solar reflectance because uh, the solar reflectance value will be uh, affected by the color shape. Imagine if your white color panels have a lot of the dirt pickup on the surface, the surface will definitely get darker. 
and hence the solar dividend value will drop as well. Okay, now we are moving on to the last uh, type of the finishes for cotton steel materials. This is come with the textures, and we introduce it in the Bomo brand. And why we want to create the textured finishes? I do believe that if I ask the questions uh, to the floor, what would be the application for the steel or the cotton steel materials uh, in the building uh, applications? I do believe that most of them I will be getting the answers. It is more towards the industrial application, factories, the warehouses. So we are trying to develop something that is dissimilar to the, towards the conventional or traditional kind of the cotton steel materials. That is come with the texture finishes so that it can be used in any type of the applications, whether it's the industrial, commercials, or taxi commercials. And it is accepted by all the layer of our nation. And I do believe that the first question we'll ask towards the texture finishes will be, will it become molded because of the texture finishes? As a reputable uh, supplier, before we roll out uh, any new product to the market, it needs to undergo a very stringent testing regime. And we need to do a lot of the study to address all the potential uh, questions which will be asked by the public. And we did uh, conduct the exposure test again to confirm that will this texture of finishes pick up more the, because of the rough surface. And from our exposure test, it shows it tells us it doesn't. We are also comparing the texture finishes versus the, the conventional type of the cotton steel, which is without the clean technology. Again, you will be seeing a lot of the watermarks on the surface itself. However, for the texture uh, finishes, it doesn't really show any very significant kind of the watermark. And this is the another exposure, which is more than a year and the similar uh, outcome have been observed. So uh, no worry about the, the pickup for the texture finishes. And not only Colorbone uh, carry out the high solar lifetime coating, for the texture finishes like the Bomo, it also uh, using the high solar lifetime coating. And we use the term reflect technology to define this high solar lifetime coating. So, you will be seeing that the SRI value, the solar pattern index, it will be definitely higher compared to the, uh, the conventional type of the coating, which is without uh, using uh, the high solar pattern coating. And this is one of the project reference. They are using the texture finishes. Actually, the application is more towards the louver applications. So the choice of the material, it does really uh, affect your, uh, the building outlook. And I would say that by using the texture finishes, it able to create the uniqueness and also to create the sense of classiness towards your building design. And this is the close-up shot on the texture finishes of products, which is Romo. And in terms of the, uh, the gross level for, for texture finishes, since the surface is, uh, is rough, it tends to reflect the, the incident rate to the various angle of the, uh, the directions. Whereby, if you perform any uh, gross meter measurements, you will be getting the nominal gross units, which is uh, very close to the matte finishes. I would say for the texture finishes, it is naturally matte. And for the rest of the color one, other than the matte finishes, the nominal gloss unique is actually we are setting at 25 gloss unique. And that's about my sharing. So in short, I have a share of the four types of finishes, which is uh, suitable for the external cladding kind of applications. And they are solid finish, metallic finish, matte finish, and texture finish. And always look for high solar lipidon coatings in order to help you 
on the surface temperature reductions and try to look for clean technology as well for non texture uh, finishes so that you have the surf cleansing ability and you, have, you no need to worry about the, the cleanliness and those uh, the, the maintenance will be at a very minimal level. So that is about my sharing for today. So I hope all of you were able to gain some insight uh, for my sharing section today. Okay, if you have any question, feel free to reach me. Yeah. Jia pass the floor back to you. Thank you, So Leng. So in the three topics shared by me, I think we cannot deny that uh, choose the right profile and use it creatively. It is it's able to bring the building outlook to be more outstanding and remarkable. And in addition, good matching color is able to make the building look greatly also. Other than colors, the texture of the material and the finishes also can give different effect to the building outlook. And uh, in the section shared by Sokling, I think uh, with her professional knowledge about the NS Busco material, it's really enlightened our audience to understand what the difference if using different material in the design. So now it's coming to the end of the product talk today. For more information, do visit our online exhibition stand by clicking at the button below, or you can scan on the QR code at display here. You can WhatsApp me uh, for any inquiries about Lysa products, and you can contact Sotlink by scan on the QR code as shown if you would like to know more about uh, our material. We are glad to have you joining today. Thank you for signing this session. I wish everybody stay safe and stay healthy. Goodbye.